those of you on high def, if I don't get this edited right away, I'm waiting for the live to kick in. Google ruins everything. Greetings, Unsettled Souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for The Media Speaks, and as promised, it is time for part two of the massive Fukushima update. Um, like I said last time, do me a favor, hit subscribe. I never remember to tell anybody that. So, go ahead, before I get started, hit subscribe. It's a huge help. Alright, friends, I'm going to get straight into it. This gentleman here. Fukushima Diary, uh, for those of you that don't know, Iori-san, uh, yank that over here a little bit, uh, Iori-san uh, had to flee, literally had to flee from Fukushima due to the, uh, the radiation and the fallout and how he knew it was going to affect his health and his family, well, I should say his health, and he's been uh, running this site and living in different countries, I think he was in France for a second, Romania, the Fukushima Diary, we're going to go to just a couple of the headlines on it while I do part two of the massive Fukushima update. Again, if you don't know, I do Fukushima updates all through the month. Uh, NRA won't allow TEPCO to restart another nuclear plant until they get control of the Fukushima plant situation. In other words, TEPCO, GE, uh, who should not, Westinghouse, should never be allowed to own uh, uh, so much as a, a garbage disposal in the future wants to continue running plants in Japan. It says, uh, on 11-6-2013, the chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, Tanaka, stated they won't start the review of the, for the restart of KK, which is Kashawazaki Kerawa nuclear plant, until they confirm TEMCO <coughs> got, to take, got to take the control over Fukushima's situation is convincing enough for Japanese people. Uh, for those of you that don't know, when you're reading uh, other languages, Japanese that has been uh, put into English, so that's why the sentences sound a little choppy. Having been financially limited, TEPCO is forced to raise the power rates unless they can restart KK nuclear plant. Well, you know, why would you want to pay, you know, maybe an extra $10 a month when you can spend so much more on cancer treatments by trusting radi radioactive uh, technologies? Tanaka commented, the Fukushima plant is full of problems which Japanese people are the most concerned about. Unless TEPCO shows the solution to convince people, NRA cannot publish the permission no matter how long it takes. And you would hope, you would hope in every way, shape, matter, and form that they don't allow this. Uh, what else is on this site? Uh, this is rotten people. Again, do, do not invest in GE. Do not invest in any, uh, anything uh, General Electric. Um, TEPCO transferred a retained contaminated rainwater in the leaking reservoir for two days. Well, it's a miracle they even kept it that long. Um, origin of 16,703 food products not known in the radiation test of Ministry of Health. Uh, it says, according to Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, the origin of 16,703 products are not known in their radiation tests. The products are food, water, and processed food. Most of them are distributed for sale. In other words, they're just going to feed this to anybody they can get stupid enough to buy it, and now it looks like you're developing an underground market where they're like, hey, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you this much seaweed or this much fish, and maybe you're only paying a little bit uh, uh, by pound per comparison to what you were paying. Just don't tell anybody where it's from. These are scum murdering their own people for a paycheck now on the streets. It's getting worse and worse. Column, no hope for external pressure. Um, the government of Japan expected IAEA to increase the credibility of their analysis to come to Fukushima, and IAEA came out and increased the credibility as expected. This is what happened today. Uh, the Marine Environment Resource Institute in Monaco, for some reason, were probably has the least effect of Fukushima. The government of Japan had the experts come from Monaco to Fukushima. Those experts went 500 meters offshore of Fukushima plant by boat. They came back to the land and said to the press that the analysis was credible. When I started Fukushima Diary, he writes, I expected the international world to pressure Japanese government from the outside. I didn't know that the world is this rotten. Uh, Mr. Iori son, I don't think any of us did. I mean, let's face it, we know what happened to Kennedy. We know what, uh, we know what Mao did to his own people, that kind of thing. But 
to the Japanese and other people willingly bringing this in. Again, uh, as I mentioned on every Fukushima update I think that I've ever done, they're not testing the food that you, if you're feeding your family, they're not testing any of it. It's as poisonous as can be. Obama has not been testing since day one, and this is fact. You can look up uh, the radiation food testing. They occasionally test for <coughs> cesium or something, but they don't test for all the radionuclides that they should. They're not doing it at all. And if you say they can't, oh, BS, I bet you Obama's food's tested. I bet you 10 to 1. This is from RT. Fukushima moves radioactive water as it braces for Typhoon Francisco. Now, it, I, it doesn't really matter so much whether or not Francisco ends up being the, the, the be-all, end-all uh, by the time all the final storms are played out. What matters is that every time a disaster happens, this is what Larry Curley and Mo here at uh, Fukushima do. Listen to this. This is, this is all they can do. They're screwed because you can't build nuclear power plants safely. End of discussion. That is the correct view. Japan's Fukushima nuclear power plant is bracing itself for Typhoon Francisco, set to hit the country this weekend, but quickly securing new storage space for contaminated rainwater that has already taken up the facility's entire storage tank. Uh, again, don't concern yourself here with the, the Typhoon Francisco. Just listen to what they do every time something happens. And keep in mind this is going to carry on for 30 years. 30 years, that's not an exaggeration. At least. The plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, has been struggling to keep radiation under control ever since the nuclear disaster took place on March 11th of 11th. When three of the plant's reactors were hit by a tsunami, which was triggered by an underground earthquake off of the coast of Fukushima. The damaged power plant has been accumulating radioactive water since, but TEPCO is running out of space quickly. To avert a new disaster triggered by a typhoon, TEPCO proposes to move the contaminated water into underground storage pools previously deemed unsafe because of leaks. Japan NHK reported Thursday there seems to be no alternative as the typhoon is fast approaching. So rather than pour it into the ocean, which they're not allowed to do, they're going to put it into leaking, uh, leaking areas of the plant that they already know is, come on, sing it with me, leaking into the ocean. Above and beyond that, th this, this is their plan. This is, this is all, I mean, they know that they live in a typhoon area. Maybe, maybe they shouldn't have built the plant. Maybe they should have listened to all the mounds of data that were warning about this since the plant was built. Maybe we should shut down all of our nuclear power plants, even if it costs a little damn more. And quit pretending that global warming is happening when it isn't. Use coal, use gas, use wind, use whatever, but quit using nuclear. And again, man is not warming the planet. Look up China Gate. not at all. The three underground pools proposed for storage have a total capacity of 9,000 tons. TEPCO stopped using similar models in April after the discovery of leaks. Well, you know, of course, they cured themselves, and they're not leaking anymore because they're magic. On Wednesday, TEPCO said it found 140,000 becquerels of beta radiation in a ditch at the power plant, uh, during double the figure of the previous day. TEPCO says this water is now being transferred to storage tank. I explained what a becquerel was yesterday. Uh, look it up, 140,000 becquerels is a lot. Um, the other thing is you don't just, it's not like you take a cup and you just fill it with water and you just pour it over here and hope it doesn't leak. The water is so radioactive to be around that it's nuking everybody moving it. The radiation has been so strong in the plant that uh, freaking um, robots have quit working. And... Every time it's moved, it's the potential and likelihood, since it usually is, exposed to the air all over again. When, when you add all that together, what you have is a rather substantial problem. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And their, th th their solution is to move it into a, a, a leaky cup, basically. The typhoon emergency measures come at a particularly anxious time for Fukushima, where workers are preparing for the most dangerous cleanup operation yet, which is slated for November. Lucky us, it's November. The operator will attempt to remove <coughs> 400 tons of spent fuel from reactor number 4, and then we've already described at nauseum what uh, that's going to be like. Again, the last show has that segment of it. Um, 
I just don't want to repeat myself and everybody's going to fall asleep on me if I do that that watched yesterday. Um, <clears throat> the need for the November operation is increasingly urgent, even critical. Any light tremor, let alone a full-on earthquake, which in Japan is known for historically, could trigger a series of catastrophic leaks, possibly resulting in the world's most severe radiological disaster yet. Recently, as it became clear that nuclear containment costs of a battered economy were taking toll on finances, the government was forced to step in with funds to try to get the cleanup back on track. A 20-kilometer no-go zone is currently imposed around the Fukushima plant. Some people say that Tokyo should already be evacuated. Uh, yesterday I did a report. It said that there was a mass of debris the size of California coming at the west coast of the United States, California, Oregon, uh, all the places that you cannot live in unless you wish to die and shorten your life. Um, if, can, anybody, can anybody tell me, they said most of it sank, can anybody tell me how in the world a, a house or a, a car doesn't sink in the ocean? I'd love to know that because every time, you know, some poor fool dries off a bridge, of course he sinks immediately. Uh, radioactive debris floats forever, who knows why. Uh, DailyMail.co.uk, it's mail online. Island of debris, the size of Texas, from the 2011 Japanese tsunami is headed straight for the U.S. Oh, but Sam, it doesn't matter. It's in Japan. It's nowhere near us. No, it's it, it, the, the ocean's not connected. Don't worry about it. The radiation will dissipate. Well, if it's dissipating so well, why are we seeing cancer deaths going through the roof already? Why are we seeing seals showing up looking like they've been through World War II Hiroshima? A floating island of debris the size of Texas has been crossing the vast Pacific Ocean to the western shores of the Americas since a devastating tsunami inundated Japan in 11, says a new study. A new study? They've known this forever. Mail Online's too busy worrying about what Lindsay Lohan's doing with her butt cheeks to, to follow this properly, but at least they're on it now, I guess. Five million tons of wreckage, the remains of homes, boats, and other remnants of shattered lives in eastern Japan were swallowed up by the ocean that day in March, and more than one million tons of flotsam continues to head towards the west coast of the U.S. While the first documented debris from the tragedy have already been found in California, scientists fear that these new findings mean that there could be a lot more and it might arrive all at once. Um... And there's a dispersion map on here. I just gave, <clears throat> gave you a quick picture of the debris here. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association released its updated findings last week. Alex Jones was fumbling for that the other day, but I do that all the time. Which show the huge island floating northeast of the Hawaiian Islands. NOAA scientists add that a larger and less concentrated debris field stretches from Alaska to the Philippines. That is huge. From Alaska to the Philippines. Some of the more mobile items have been documented as washing up on the coast of California as early as 11. In April, a 20-foot boat ran aground at Crescent City, California. It was formally identified as a boat that belonged to a marine sciences program at Takata High School in the city of Rikuzen, Takata. In all 27 items from among more than 1,600 reports of debris have been firmly traced back to the tsunami, NOAA spokesman Keely Belva said. The confirmed items include a small boat found in Hawaiian waters, large docks that have been washed ashore in Washington State and Oregon, and a motorcycle that washed ashore off the coast of British Columbia. Uh, if anybody finds this, whatever you do, don't touch it. Get away from it. I don't, if you're living there, you're an idiot anyway. But um, this is highly, highly radioactive. Uh, depending on exactly where this was, uh, it could have a fallout from the actual explosion, which was, uh, for anyone that follows this, a nuclear explosion that happened there. Very, very toxic. Very toxic. A soccer ball found on an Alaskan island with a student's name on it was traced to the same city. Uh, Distinguishing everyday trash from tsunami debris has proven difficult in most other cases, which is why you should live there. Items that are confirmed as having come from the tsunami, like the soccer ball and the boat, tend to have unique markings. It's far more difficult to distinguish between domestic and Japanese everyday wood debris, for instance. 
Giger counters, which detect radiation, are no help in identifying debris. It was initially thought that the instruments might be able to pick up traces of radiation from the still leaking nuclear reactor at Fukushima, but none of the de debris has any detectable radioactivity. Well, that's not what other reports have said. So, I, my, my guess is the way they were testing it, find out the proper way to use it, and uh, <clears throat> I think you'll be surprised at what other studies have found that a lot of uh, the debris has shown to have, in fact. Um, <clears throat> friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, and it is brought to you by the Arcadia Grill in Canton, Ohio. If you have not been to the Arcadia Grill, then you're missing out on some of the best food in Canton, Ohio. Friends, Global Post, South Korea confirms North Yongbyon plat Plutonium Reactor Restart. Now, I'm going to get in and extend my Fukushima coverage to some of the really stupid things that are going on in the world today. Uh, regarding all things nuclear. First of all, you would think we would learn our lesson from the meltdowns at Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and multiple meltdowns in Malthus at Fukushima. Now you've got other idiots. Uh, the dolts in Iran want to build a nuclear reactor on a, uh, on a mountain, mountain, even though the, the seismically active shifts in Iran are also legendary even though that other sides of the, their own Islamic religion will want to bomb it and use its own dirty bomb against it, even though they want to build and weaponize it, as I'm going to get to. I don't want to hear the, oh, Israel's got one. Israel shouldn't have one, either the U.S. shouldn't have one, nobody should have one. That doesn't mean that you should build more. Um, <clears throat> what, if my neighbor has a meth lab, I should be allowed to open one? Oh, don't worry about it, he's got one. Yeah, it might blow your house up next door. No. Don't give me the Israel's got one. Israel's not as uh, seismically unstable as Iran is. Israel doesn't have two factions of its own religion that might bomb the nuclear power plant like Islam does. At least two factions. And Israel has never threatened to throw a dirty bomb at its neighbor as some of the more terroristic factions in Iran have done. Um, again, not the people of Iran, but the government and the fascist Islamists. And I'm sorry, I agree with Michael Savage, they are the new Hitlers. Well, this is some great nuclear news going on here. Korea is not happy enough to be getting Fukushima radiation. They want to see if they can up the stupidity level. Uh, South Korea's <clears throat> spy agency confirmed Tuesday that the North has restarted an aging plutonium reactor and that could help boost its nuclear weapons program. Now what it's going to do is boost their space exploration program when they accidentally blow themselves to death. The North Koreans cannot build a successful water balloon. Um, their, their, their navy consists of a, a, a dinghy. And they're, they're, this thing has been aging. We know what aging reactors do in the U.S. where they're at least half-checked. Uh, look at this. They're gonna, uh, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna create another Fukushima. That's what they're gonna do. The National Intelligence Service said in a report to Parliament that the five megawatt reactor at North Yongbyon's nuclear complex has resumed operations, according to a joint briefing by ruling and opposition party lawmakers. I tell you what, America's backpedaling to some degree. Everyone can see it every day, but North Korea backpedaling with it in like a jets. Good Lord, uh, Mach 4 backpedaling. The report was presented at a closed intelligence committee session, lawmakers told media. The spy agency declined to comment on the report. It followed speculation by the U.S. Korea Institute at John Hopkins University in Baltimore that North Korea has restarted the reactor, pure brilliance. A commercial satellite image taken on September 19th showed the plutonium reactor releasing hot wastewater into a river through a new drain pipe, the think tank said last week. So, now uh, they're releasing their nuclear water deliberately into their water supply, into the river. Um, now go ahead and look up um, Mavec, Russia, where they did that. Where, look what their water is like. Look at, their, look at their birth deformities, if you think that I'm making it up, if you think it's not important. <sighs> Brilliant people over there. The image from late July had not shown any sign of hot water discharge, however, indicating a recent relaunch. <coughs> In reports last month, 
the Institute and another Washington think tank, the Institute of Science and International Security, observed steam coming from the reactor. The drain pipe is critical to maintaining a safe temperature at the reactor. <clears throat> North Korea knocked down a cooling tower in 08 to show its commitment to U.S.-backed aid for disarmament deal. Pyongyang carried out its third nuclear test in February, sparking international condemnation and raising tensions on the Korean Peninsula for a month. Um, this is going to be an absolute mess for the Orient, because let's face it, if there is any nation in the world less equipped to run a nuclear reactor than Iran, it's probably Korea. And again, the Orient cannot take another blow. It simply cannot... Real quick, friends, go to the mediaspeaks.com, and when you do, click on Bud K. And when you click on Bud K, we go to the closeouts. You'll find the Avalanche Cross, bro. It's 120 pounds for $49.98. You'll find a U.S. Marine 1942 leather neck knife and sheath. Normally $19.99, it's $12.99. You know anybody that likes uh, strange gifts? Someone's got everything? Well, there you go. Uh, do you know anybody that gets off work late? Maybe you worry they're going to get robbed or raped. $9.99, Night Watchman, 100,000 volt stun gun. Now, you won't be raping anybody when you've been jolted with that. Uh, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and do it in that order, then click on Bud K, and you will be helping us greatly. Friends, uh, while on the topic of Iran, I want to get to the, the pinhead nation, what they want to do here, and I already described why it's a bad idea. Uh, no one should have nuclear anything. Bolton, Israel must make fateful decision on Iran strike. Now, I was not against uh, Israel taking out the plant when they were first starting it. I wasn't. I said if they did it, I completely understood it. And I'm not for first offensive attacks. I'm really not. I'm just less against nuclear. Uh, more against nuclear. Um, the problem here is it didn't happen, so now it can't. Why? Because you're going to send a plume of radioactivity way into the sky when you bomb them to get them to stop it so that they don't send radiation far into the sky. Israel is close enough to Iran that if Iran melts this down, it will affect Israel. It will, yes, greatly. It will be like Israel got nuked almost as bad as Iran did. Israel does not have much time to make a fateful decision about whether to strike Iran's nuclear sites and poison the entire Middle East. Former UN Ambassador John Bolton said Sunday in a radio interview, Israel, I think, now faces the fateful decision whether it will allow Iran to get nuclear weapons thus, consisting, thus constituting a true existential threat to Israel, he said. No, the true existential threat to Israel would be bombing the nuclear site and sending the radiation into Israel, Bolton once again proving he's adult. Or whether they will strike as the Israelis have done twice against nuclear programs in the hands of hostile states, Bolton said, uh, WABC Radio's Aaron Klein. For those of you that think I automatically side with Israel because I think they're less hateful, I do think they're less hateful, and I think they're idiots if they do this, I'm against it as well because it's dumb. I don't think Israel has much time, Bolton continued. Uh, Bolton, he's now already about two years too late. Frankly, they should have done this years ago because we all know intelligence is imperfect and Iran may have some belt capacity that we don't know about, perhaps in cooperation with North Korea. Oh no, that's the reason they should have done it years ago. Dummy. Maybe before the nuclear elements got there. Don't. The former UN ambassador reacted to a statement by Defense Secretary Leon Panetta who said Thursday that while the U.S. has implemented unprecedented sanctions and pressure on Iran, we may very well have to use military force to back up our policy. A last paragraph, Bolton retorted, if there is anybody left in Israel who thinks the U.S. will use military force against Iran's program, they only need to seriously re-examine their basic values. It isn't going to happen under the Obama administration. I'll say it again, it isn't going to happen. No, Obama is that stupid. Trust me, it might still happen. Very unlikely, though. Um, but it's for political reasons. Again, not because anybody has even a basic understand of, uh, understanding of physics to, to grasp the full weight of what that would do you would be triggering a nuclear reaction of the blown up elements. And again, it's in a mountain, so they're going to end up taking the whole side of the mountain off to have any success at this at all. 
and now you've got radioactive dirt and debris going in all directions, and the only people that aren't idiots in Iran are the peaceful Islamists, and they're going to get rained on with fallout. Hitler's here. The Daily Caller, yes, I called them Hitler's, and yes, I stand by it. Not all, they're the fascists, not the Islamists. There's a difference. Iran demands right to expand nuclear program because they're stupid. I might have added part to that. Despite a softening tone from Iranian President Hassan Rouhani on the regime's illicit nuclear program, the Islamic Republic is hardening its position on the right to enrich Lamanium and potentially poison its own country and its neighbors. I may have added something to that too. An analysis by Fars News Agency, the Revolutionary Guards media outlet, said that Iran not only has the right to continue its nuclear program, but to expand it dramatically to fulfill its needs. Its needs being to have a massive earthquake and uh, a nuclear meltdown that causes cancer and heart disease. Of course, it also wants to fill the, fulfill its needs to have future uh, radiation leaks like they had about a year and a half ago. And I reported on it. The recent analysis comes from the second round of talks between Iran and the world 5 plus 1 powers. It's to take place on November 7th and 8th. That'd be today. The regime's supreme leader, <laughs> supreme leader, said on Sunday, wipe my tail with his turban, that's how supreme I think he is, that he is not optimistic about those negotiations and called America the most hated power in the world. Well, that may be as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend we never do anything wrong either because America shouldn't have anything nuclear either. Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, does anybody really care what he says, also restated the regime's view of Israel. We have said since the very first day of the Islamic Revolution, and we say it now, and we will say it in the future as well, that we believe the Zionist regime is an illegitimate and bastard regime. I have every belief that Israel is uh, a warmongering state, and I do not like its leaders, but Israel has a right to exist exactly where it is. Its leaders are scum, but the people of Israel, the Jewish people, have a right to be right where they are. Western countries are worried that Iran, which has threatened to destroy Israel, is trying to develop nuclear weapons to carry out that threat. It has been reported here on many occasions that the regime has made strides in that direction. And this is what these little Hitlers want. A recognition of its right to nuclear energy and its need to expand the program. Yeah, that's a great idea. All rights for Iran under the Treaty of Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons must be recognized, including uranium management. Iran must have the right to expand its nuclear power plants and have the right to build anywhere in the country. Oh, that way you can build right on the border and poison all of your neighbors. To fulfill the needs of these plants, Iran must have the right to build further facilities for uranium enrichment anywhere in the country, whether it's a huge desert or under soaring mountains, and increase the number of centrifuges to melt down. Iran must have the right to export nuclear fuel and not be required to import such for its facilities. Um, oh, what, what, what else does Hitler say here? A radical uh, theoretician of the regime, Hussein Allah Karam, which must mean uh, I'm an idiot, in an interview with the regime's media outlet, K-Bar Online, suggested further that Iran should enrich uranium all the way to weaponization. <sighs> Iran is really a problem. Now, does that mean that Israel's not a problem? Does that mean that America doesn't do anything wrong? And does it mean either one of those things? Because both of those things are not true. What it does mean is Iran is once again hinting that it wants to go all the way with this nuclear disastrous idea that they have. And again, we all know how seismically active the area is. We all know what a meltdown in that region would do. And Israel needs to shut its nuclear power plant down too, before it gets uh, melted down or melted through. Israel is not big enough to sustain a nuclear disaster. If that ever happens, then Iran won't have to worry about it, and Israel could very likely do it to itself. Ask Japan. Ask Chernobyl. Go ahead. Call Gorbachev. Ask him what brought the Soviet Union down. It wasn't the U.S., it was Chernobyl. <clears throat> Although Reagan was a close second. BBC.co.uk Last thing I'm going to get to, Saudi nuclear weapons on order from Pakistan. 
So, uh, and now we've got uh, more scum selling the scum. Saudi Arabia, the only reason we befriended them is for the mighty dollar. They are one of the most oppressive regimes ever. Look what they have. Well, where's the National Organization of Women? Where's the feminazis? Where are they at? <clears throat> when um, all this is going on in Saudi Arabia and our country just loves them. When else Saudi Arabia is mad at us because we didn't fight their wars for them. Saudi Arabia has invested in Pakistan on nuclear weapons projects and believes it could obtain atomic bombs at will. A variety of sources have told BBC Newsnight. What should we do? We should stop funding all of these nations and let them fend for themselves. That's what we should do. Leave! But we're there to stop them from getting the bomb. We seem to be doing a great job. Maybe we should leave. While the Kingdom's quest has often been set in the context of countering Iran's atomic regime, it is now possible that the Saudis might be able to deploy such devices more quickly than the Islamic Republic. Yeah, and they'll use them on a woman that votes. Infidel boom country gone. Earlier this year, a senior NATO decision maker told me that he had seen intelligence reporting that nuclear weapons made in Pakistan on behalf of Saudi Arabia are now sitting ready for delivery. Allah be praised. Last month, Amos Yadlin, I'm kidding, a former head of Israeli military intelligence, told a conference in Sweden that if Iran got the bomb, the Saudis will not wait one month. They already paid for the bomb. They will go to Pakistan and bring what they need to bring. Oh, good. Now, hopefully this will happen at the same time that Iran is melting down, and we won't have a Middle East. That would be wonderful. That's what everybody wants. Congratulations. Since so I, when King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, the dolt, warned visiting U.S. Special Envoy to the Middle East, Dennis Ross, that if Iran crossed the threshold, we will get nuclear weapons. The kingdom has sent the Americans numerous signals of its intentions. Gary Samore, until March 2013, President Barack Obama's counter-proliferation advisor, has told Newsnight, I don't think that the Saudis believe that they have some under... I do think that the Saudis believe that they have some understanding with Pakistan that an extremist they would have claimed to require nuclear weapons from Pakistan. The story of Saudi Arabia's project, it goes on, including the acquisition of missiles capable of delivering nuclear warheads over long ranges, goes back decades, and it gives you the history and links for it. So now, what do we got here at the end of the Fukushima update? Not only is Japan uh, in a mess, North Korea is running a, an ancient reactor Ancient in uh, terms of uh, nuclear, it's, it's very, it's a dinosaur, it, it can melt down at any minute. Uh, it's it's been dumping its nuclear fuel into the river. We've got Iran that wants to build a power plant on top of an uh, active earthquake zone in the middle of a religious war zone in complete blind eye to Fukushima's uh, brilliance without the war, just the earthquake. You've got... Uh, Bolton saying that Israel should bomb Iran and send nuclear plumes in all over the Middle East. And Saudi Arabia and Pakistan want to play nuclear war footsies so that if Iran and Israel don't blow up the Middle East, they can. That is the correct views, friends. I'm That's horrible, but it's true. Thank you for listening. Good night. God bless. Do me a favor. Share this video far and wide. I work very, very hard on this show, but harder than anything on the Fukushima updates because... This is the most important thing going on. And those that don't know it don't know anything about health. Guys, I want to thank the Arcadia Grill. I want to tell you to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. And while you're there, look at the great work always being done by Kyle, Delay, Court. I've even got some garbage in there from time to time, too. Good night, friends. God bless.